Hey guys, this is Ina from Cashew, and today we are going to be animating the character that we created last time. If you haven't watched the previous video, we created this character in After Effects. So today that we have our character designed, it is time to animate him. So this is the animation that we'll be creating. And as always, the project files will be in the description if you want to download and practice on your own. First, let's create a new object. You can do that by clicking Control Out and Y. And let's name that Face. Then I just noticed that I have to parent the noise of the nose with the nose. And then we have to do some parenting here as well like the head circle noise should be parented to the head circle. And then I'm going to click this icon over here because I want to hide this layer. I don't want to see it. We won't be needing it now. So let's just get rid of it. Now let's parent the head noise uh, with the head and hide it again. We already parented the, uh, the nose noise. Uh, so I'm just going to rename that and hide it. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the beard. I'm just going to parent the mask and the noise of the beard with the beard and I'm going to hide them. Same goes with the eye mask uh, and then the other eye mask as well. So now I see that I have another layer for the noise of the body. I'm going to parent that to the body and hide it again. So now our composition contains only elements that we will be animating. The next thing that I'm going to do would be to parent all the face layers to the new object that we created for the face. The first thing that we are going to do would be to just select the body and the noise. We are going to be animating each body part separately and we are going to start with the body. I'm going to hide everything else and I am going to first change the anchor point. You can do that by clicking Y on the keyboard or if you have the anchor point mover, you can just click on one of the arrows. Uh, so I'm just going to manually move that here and now I will be animating the scale and the position. So I'm going to click on the body layer, click P on the keyboard and then S to bring up scale and position and add keyframes. I'm going to select these and click F9 to easy ease them. And then I am going to move to around the one second mark. And keep in mind, we're going to play with these keyframes until we are happy with the action. So for now, let's just start by adding keyframes on the one second mark. So I'm just going to click uh, the icon over there so I can add keyframes. So now that we have the keyframes at the start and at the end, let's add the in-between shots. So um, just going to animate the scale here and the position. And then in the middle, I want it to go up and scale it a bit. Yes, like that. And then right before the final keyframe, I'm going to copy the second keyframes and paste them there because we would like this animation to loop. And let's play that. Okay, looks pretty good, but we'll need to make some adjustments. So now let's click on the, the body and then position. And then we are going to click on the graph editor so we can adjust the frames we will need to separate the X from Y positions and then we will need to easy ease all the keyframes by clicking on this icon and then adjusting the arcs. So let's just first easy ease them and this one as well. Okay, great. Uh, so now we'll need to make some adjustments. So when you're working with the speed graph and like or the value graph, you might want to just play uh, your animation to see what will be the best fit. So for now, I think this one doesn't look very good. So uh, let me try this. Okay, it doesn't look good either. So I'm just going to make another speed graph like that. And this is way better and um, I just need to adjust it a little bit more. So again, play around with the value graph or like the speed graph until you're happy with the animation. And now I'll just need to adjust the timing because it was just a bit too uh, too fast. Let me adjust the graph again and we are ready. So the second thing that we are going to be animating would be the face. I'm going to click on the new object that we created for the face, click P on the keyboard and I'm going to see where my second keyframe is from the body and then I'm going to start adjusting the keyframes. So first, when we were parenting, we forgot to parent the face to the body. So we're going to do that now and same with the head. The head should be parented to the face. So now let's add the third keyframe, which is when the monster goes up. So the face needs to go up as well. The, the next keyframe should be a copy of the second keyframe 
and the final keyframe should be a copy of the first keyframe so it can loop. So this is how it looks and it looks pretty good but we'll need to make some adjustments to the graph again. So I'm just going to speed this up uh, but basically we're going to use a pretty similar graph as uh, the body and this is how our face looks now. So next we will be animating the eyebrows. I am selecting the eyebrows, clicking P on the keyboard and for the eyebrows, we don't want them to move exactly with the face because we want to have this cool, smooth animation. Right, like two frames after the second keyframe of the face, we are going to add the first position and about one frame before the third frame, we are going to add the second position and we're going to make the eyebrows go up and then kind of in the middle between the third and the fourth keyframe, we're going to just copy and paste uh, the same keyframe and then at the end uh, in the final keyframe we're going to just copy and paste the keyframes from the start so it can loop and now about two frames before the final keyframe we'll make the eyebrows go down before they go up so we can have this smooth motion so now that we have the position keyframes we would need to animate the pads, open up the layers, shape, pad, and just add keyframe for the pad, and then do the same thing with the other eyebrow. So now I'm going to easy ease them, and then right where our second eyebrow keyframe is, I am going to click G, and I'm going to add another dot over here, uh, yes, and I'm going to just hold so I can make an arc, and then I'm going to adjust the eyebrow, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other eyebrow. So when the monster looks up, the eyebrows go up as well, not only with the position, but also they change their shape and form. So now I'm just going to add another keyframe, basically just copying the last keyframes. And then right here, since the eyebrows go down, I'm going to change the shape of them as well. So we can make them go down. Great, and then at the end, just copy and paste the first keyframe so it can look. So this is how it looks for now, and I think that's cool. So we are ready with the eyebrows. Now let's move forward with the pupils. We are going to add a position right around the fifth frame, and we are going to make him look up, but we are going to adjust the position a bit because I think it will look cuter if he doesn't look just straight up, but more at the center. Uh, so uh, yeah, so the difference is uh, pretty obvious um, and I think it looks way better. So now let's add the other keyframes and then just copy and paste these keyframes. However, at this point he should be looking down, so let's adjust that a little bit. Yes, and then at the end we are just going to copy and paste the first keyframe again. So I'm going to easy ease these keyframes by clicking F9 and let's play that. Okay, so see how when he looks down, it looks kind of weird. I mean, it just happens too fast and it's just too big of a motion. So we're going to adjust that. Let's just adjust the pose when he is looking down so it looks more natural. And now let's see. Okay, yeah, well, this is way better now. Okay, perfect. So how about we make him blink uh, before he moves his eyes? That would make him look way more natural. So I'm going to select the two eye layers, click S on the keyboard to bring up scale and then add a keyframe. And then about two frames in, I'm going to click on this icon and bring that to two. And then about two frames after, two, three frames after, I'm just going to add another keyframe and then copy and paste the first keyframe. So let's preview that. Awesome, so we are ready with the eyes, eyebrows and the body. So now we are going to be adjusting the beard. When the monster looks up and goes up as he bounces, we would like to change the shape of the beard uh, because it's just uh, not fitting his face. So we are just going to move the mask. So remember in the first tutorial, we created a shape layer and then we created a mask inside the shape so we can have the beard. So now we are going to be moving the mask of this layer and I'm just adding keyframes for the beard so we can make sure it fits the face in all positions. So yeah, so I'm just going to adjust that and then I just need to move this here. Yes, because uh, I'm referring to the body. Then the next keyframe, I'm just going to copy and paste the second keyframe and for the final keyframe, I'm just going to copy and paste the first keyframe. Okay, 
Well, yeah, looks pretty good to me. Now, as you can see, the mask that we have for the noise, it's going out of the beard. So in the first tutorial, we added an alpha mate on the noise with the beard. However, now that we changed the mask of the beard, so we added the keyframes of the mask, we would just need to replace the alpha mate um, beard. Uh, so instead of being the original one that doesn't have any keyframes, we're just going to simply click Control D, duplicate the beard, move it above the noise, parent it with the beard, remove all the keyframes, delete the previous one, and we are ready. Make sure the noise is on alpha mate of this beard. So yeah, so we didn't have to make any adjustments and the noise is looking great now. So the next we are going to be animating the nose just click P on the keyboard to bring up position. And when he looks down, we'll just need to move the nose down a bit. Then when he looks up, let's bring the nose up like this. Yes. And then here, just copy and paste the second keyframe. And here, copy and paste the first keyframe. So let's see how that looks. Okay, awesome. So now we'll be animating the head. And for the head, we will be just basically animating the position and the masks. So I'm just going to add keyframes for all the masks and all the pads of the elements of the head. So as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, we will need to convert some of the shapes to basic pads so we can adjust the pad. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to right click on the head circle and then I'm going to click convert to bezier pad adding the keyframe and then adding keyframes for everything else so that way I just know that I have keyframes for everything I just can move things around I am going to select all these layers and click U on my keyboard so I can see only the keyframes that I want and now that we have the first position let's animate the second position so here the head needs to go down a little bit. So let's adjust that. And this layer over here, I'm just going to change the pad of it because when the head goes down, it just doesn't make sense for this element to look like that. I'm going to adjust the pad of the main head and then this element over here as well. Uh, so yeah, it needs to go down a bit. So I'm just going to adjust the mask that we created in the previous tutorial. Let's just change the pad a bit until everything looks natural. And now the next thing is that I want all these elements of the head to be behind the body. So let me move these layers. Okay, great. And now I need to adjust them. Yes, so the third keyframe of the head should be a bit different uh, as if the head goes up. Yes, and then we'll just need to adjust the little circle over here. And again, make sure the first and the last keyframes are the same so we can have this cool loop effect. I just need to adjust this layer over here. Yes, copy paste, adjust that. Okay, awesome. Okay, yes, great. So yeah, we have this very cool bounce effect here that I love. So the next thing is just, we need to adjust the noise that we created. So let's adjust the part of it. But then as you can see, the noise goes, goes outside of the head again. So we're going to do something different here. So we're going to open up the head noise pad, and then we're going to open up the head element pad. We basically just animated the head behind. This is the element behind the head pad. And so that's why just the mask doesn't work. So we're just going to basically go at the start of keyframes and then copy the pad keyframes and then paste them here. Yep, let's see how that looks. I need to adjust that a bit. Yes, so the noise has its own mask now and and it looks great. So let me just deselect all the elements uh, that are uh, selected now and see the whole video. Okay, good. Well, it's starting to look very good. So now I'm just going to select the two eyebrows and move them above the mouth because I want them to be above the head, basically. Uh, yes, and I think this looks very, 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 very cute. The next thing that we are going to do would be to make sure that all the layers that have keyframes have a keyframe at the start and at the end. Because for example, as you can see here, because these keyframes are basically not where every keyframe ends. So we're just going to make sure 
we have keyframes because the next thing we're going to do would be to copy and paste all the keyframes a few times yes and the reason we are doing that because basically we can also add an expression here but since later on we'll be creating a duplicates of this layer i want to make sure i track where every keyframe ends and where the whole composition ends so i can create a smooth loop animation so now this is our main character so just rename that main character and click Control d we are just basically now going to duplicate it a few times but adding a few different things to each one of these characters yes duplicate it again i have this vector of glasses that i want to add to my second character and i'm just going to parent that to the nose and i'm just going to change the mouth yes yeah great okay so basically then the whole animation is the same it's duplicate of the first one but we just added the glasses so let's do the same thing just duplicate the main character that would be main character three for this one i'm just going to remove the head and i'm going to create another head that i'm going to add here and i'm going to parent it to the body and i'm going to do the same thing just duplicate the main character again and in this composition i will be adding this head over here and i'm going to be adjusting a few things and now for the cool part we are just combining all these things and creating our cool looping animation and then i'm just going to type main character so i can see all the variations of the character that i created and i'm going to drag and drop them here okay great so now let's zoom in timeline and let's see where is this cut this is over here so we are going to be switching the characters in the moment where keyframes are the fastest and this is when the character goes down so that way it looks smooth rather than just clumsy and weird so we're switching exactly here so yes and i would like to just get rid of this layer now uh, but instead of going back and then cutting the composition i'm just going to click ctrl shift and d to duplicate it and cut it and then delete it so yes exactly that's great we are going to do the same thing just figure out okay so this is when the character goes down these are the fastest keyframes so the switch will be here and i'm going to again click ctrl shift and d to cut and duplicate and delete so yes yes isolate that okay great and it's around here that will be our fourth variation great duplicate cut and delete okay great so now we'll just need to make it look i'm going to duplicate the main character so that'll be the first animation that we created and then i am going to make it start here duplicate cut and delete and let me just open up the composition so i can see exactly where it ends and this is why i mentioned i wanted to copy and paste the keyframes rather than creating an expression to loop them um okay great so it ends here open up the composition so basically the composition should end here and if we play that all right okay great we managed to create this animation in under 20 minutes which is pretty impressive if you want to download my project files and practice on your own feel free to do that all the project files are free i would appreciate if you like comment and share this tutorial if it was helpful thank you for time and see you next week